Hello everyone. So I'm doing a speech in Vegas about this particular job. So Aaron and I right now we're filming uh, just a short little segment that I can show to the class, show to all the students. And we figured, well, why don't we just post it up for you guys to show too? So it's kind of like the condensed version of our engraving video, which we've been avoiding and it's complicated. So we'll see what it comes out. All right, right now we're just gonna turn a diameter. Almost done. So that part was just measured a diameter of 18005, which is perfect goal is 1800 so the part is absolutely perfect down here in 149 and 150 you have my range my min and my max so as long as the measured size is within the range we're good otherwise it'll spit it out Yeah, 1798. Alright, so I take my measured diameter and I go 0 0.1798. Alter that one. And then it's going to run through this probe. And I go like that. Like that, like that, like that. All right, this is one of the projects that um, I work on with the macro programming and the probing. Uh, it was very complicated to set up, but I'm super glad that I did because now it's been absolutely headache free and hassle free and it's been awesome. When we engrave the serial number on our blades, everyone has a different serial number. So I wanted uh, a macro that counts up automatically. 1000, 1001, 1002, 1003. It knows the steel choice, it engraves it on there and it counts up one, two, three, four, five, six, but sometimes we don't put six blades on here, we just put two. Or what if I put one here and one here? I want the macro to be able to know what's gonna happen. So basically, I created a routine. The probe comes in and it probes the palette and says, oh, there's a palette there. All right, let me go to the next step. Else, skip to the end and ignore it. There's no palette. Um, and then it'll go down, it'll probe the first blade and I've got height limits set. So if it, if it touches something, it goes, oh, there's a blade there, so variable whatever goes to one instead of zero and then it goes to the next and then oh there's a blade there oh there's a blade there blade 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 otherwise it would be a zero so now there's six variables that have either a one or a zero that know if there's blades there and then from there the code goes on to know okay let me engrave this one and then i go and then i do a tool breakage check and then if it's good i move on and 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 it counts up every time and it's awesome Regular day at the shop here. As I'm putting, I have to use this tool holder for something else. So as I'm putting the used tool back in for engraving, I wonder to myself, how old is this tool? So let me show you on the machine here. 
I created a uh, tool life macro that if I search for uh, variable 832, this is tool 32, so my 800 series is that. This has done seven blade engravings and it was last replaced uh, two days ago. So I'm using these to track my tool life and I know that seven is kind of high, like it's probably gonna break on this next batch of six, but I'm gonna run it anyway. Had I replaced the tool, I would make that zero and today, but I didn't replace the tool. So I just leave it. Here's another example of a macro. As I'm doing my uh, tool length check on the probe, on the Renishaw probe, I type in G65 P9857, which calls up a subroutine. And then I go T32 for the tool, which is a macro variable. And then I go through there. And the Renishaw has their own macros and their own subroutines that crunches through all this data and does all these calculations and all these measurements. So remember I said that tool was probably not going to last very long? It broke on the very first blade. All gone. Another macro that I've been wanting to do for a super long time and I finally came up with it a few weeks ago and it's been awesome. So when we machine our knives we have, we have five different patterns that we switch between all the time. And I used to have five different codes. Now it's all built into the same fixture. So I have all these drilled and tapped holes here. The probe comes in and it goes, nope, nope, oh, there's something there. Make that a variable one. And then it skips the rest because it knows we're done and it moves to the blade steel and it goes, oh, RWL34, I know I need to do that because the codes are slightly different for a damascus steel blade. So this lets the, the operator, the, the pallet filler upper, choose what pattern to make it and the code does everything else. It's amazing. It was complicated to set up, but it's one of those things like all the work up front and then it works awesome. Thank you.